back. Literally taking the attack straight on. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Mo oh my god, there's so many moles again. Still so many moles. Um, on the attack, what are they deciding to bring the Americans here? Have switching their units out quite a lot here. Very interesting, very interesting to see what we're going to bring out. Cataphracts here, you've got uh, Pike Militia, you've got Iron Reapers, you've got Grey Hairs, you've got Harbinger Sergeants. Nope, nope, that's changed out. Now we've got Port Brasio, obviously, Grey Hairs, Flamers, Zykelian Militia, like that, and then IPGs. And then on the defence, similar strategies, you're going to have Tertius, Iron Reapers, Palace Guards, ISGs, there's Cilidars in there as well. A couple of sets of Cilidars, actually. Port Brasio, IPG, Palace Guards, and... Iron Reapers, with uh, some some flamers later on potentially with banner guards as well. A set of hussars. Um, is there hussars actually in the attack inside this time? No, it's just cats by the looks of it. Just cats in the attack this time around. Actually, they went down to having armagers as well, but there's only a couple of units of cav here. Not not like it was the last couple of fights where we had a lot of cav. Let's jump off the camera. Let's get underway. Let's make sure there's no runes on anybody's characters. And we are ready to start the battle. Final battle of the night, guys. This is Pongard versus Slavs. It's 1-0 currently to Pongard. And so far, the predictions are going in the way of the Pongard. So far, you have 90% of you guys voting for Pongard. And let's have a look here. No runes, that's fine. Done. There is no runes, we are all good, and we can now get ourselves that overall view. Obviously, the same thing happens every single start of T like the start of the fights, like even just like TWs, it's like it's that prep side. It's the prepping part where we all have a look and you use all the artillery and you just do what you have to do until eventually something starts to happen. The first minute and a half to two minutes could be the, the most boring part or it could be a very exciting part depending on what team's doing what. They have got javelins out in the defence there, trying to javelin the far right siege tower as you can see in the distance there. That one's getting hit quite a bit. You aren't half as Scottish today as you were last night. <laughs> Alexi will be like, no, I don't want to see it. So nobody's managed to take any of the siege towers down as it is yet. It doesn't look like they'll get it down. Maximus is on top of that one. That will, I don't think there's enough thing to do it. Uro is going to damage that enough to probably take it out as well, potentially. He has done good work with taking out artillery as it is, and that artillery will fall. It does. Maximus, that whole, every single siege tower is going to manage to make it up on the wall. CK is trying to avoid units falling here, but they're all dying to the tertials through the gateway here. Just trying to kill the units to stop the push of the baton ram. There we go, I got it right. The baton ram. There we go, we got the baton ram. If they could kill that, kill the heroes and the units out there are pushing that. Then they get the opportunity. But they get A for free here, as, as always. Nobody really defends that. It's too, too easily attackable. Um, trebs and whatnot. But the boys are already set up here from Slavs on the ground. Fort Brasio and all. You've got... Plenty of units of ISGs down here. A couple of sets of four brachios. You've got javelins. You've got palace guards over there as well. Cilidars. Iron and Reapers. Plenty of that. And uh, same for over here as well on this side. You've got some IPGs, Cilidars, Iron and Reapers. Lots of d damage dealing units in there. Along with the unit of uh, infantry that can push and knock things down. So if you can do that, use the IPGs at the right time. And then get your damage hit in behind. Exactly what you want. It never works out like that when you push anymore. 
But it's what you want it to be like. You know why is though Bongard split on both sides here. They've not got a decide deciding factor of where they're going at this point in time. If you look at the mini map down below there, there isn't really anywhere else they're going apart from away in the corner here. Asianism's got a unit that far back. But that's because it's Sedges, right? Oh no, it's Iron Reapers. From here it looks like they're, they're using it. They have a gun in their hand, but they don't. Oh, the, the muskets doing work on the, the death boxes down below. As you can see, Billy D, Siki, doing as much as they can with their cow drops, their bombs, their normal shots. Just whatever they can to whittle down and weaken the units as the Senjis try to fire up the top to them. All three muskets and Urahil is going to get involved as well onto your right hand side dealing damage. You've also got SMP who's also picked up a musket. They've all picked up a musket. They've used this plan. They were like, right, now we need to start dealing damage to death box. What are we going to do? Right, we'll get, all get a musket on. We'll just start dropping bombs. And as that happens, Slavs were like, right, we're, 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 we're taking too much damage here. We're going to put them underneath the gate uh, tower. Now they can't they can't do anything to the units. So that's that's, that's clever of Slavs. It's a good good tactic. Good is it, Good decision to do that. And I think the gate is still open as well, so yeah, Adam is there, Treb is coming here, trying to hit the unit of Iron Reapers that's in the back here, that building will take the brunt of most of that there, one Treb does hit in, maybe a second one in a, from the far right side, but no, that only one of them hit, only one of them hit, Watson still down below, look at him, just, 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 just hitting people with his longbow, Doing what he does best. And he runs back, manages to stay alive. Urahil is doing the same, just knocking people down, stunning people for as long as he possibly can. Well, Billy D gets involved with that damage there, potentially dealing some da good damage to these heroes. Um, now they're starting to move their units out though. Pongard are kind of set to go both ways, but so far we've got eight minutes left and uh, there is no sign of what's going down here from Pongard. There's a lot of units r r yeah, like been moving from the supply point. I didn't see that little sneaky bit in the background here. But the any boys now are coming down all three fronts here. Or are they going to change it up here? Are they coming down? Take down Siki. I've got units here in the back. Now they're going to try and pincer the little side here. Because that's going to be their def their defensive system there. But now they managed to get them back. Josic has gone back. And there's technically now 1v1 in on that fight there. Um, it's going to be a good fight, both sides now, we've got both sides pushing down, and the bottom of the stairs is where these fights are becoming, you've got Flamers doing some work, there's heroes dying, drop dead, goes to Watson, he gets the first kill, the Brave is dead though, a couple of heroes on the NA side, Pongard are dying, but it's also pretty even here, we're 13 for 13 here, God's Apostle starts to cap the point. Just because, just because nobody's there to do anything about it, the heroes are too preoccupied, and General Combo is going to be that one to do it. As things stand here, the defense have lost a couple more heroes here, and their fight is going on the supply point. You've got the musket players trying to do as much damage to these heavier armor classes like Lazy Imperator, Van Blade, who are potentially going to fall here to the any side cap in the supply point here. Now they're going to have to full push it here. Van Blade stayed alive for so long here, but there's so much more damage dealing units in there and heroes for the any boys that have managed to get it. Pongard picked that one up here and as you can see they still have nine people alive here ready to push. At least ten, twelve now we have, that's the twelfth person now back. Oh, is he going to catch out heroes here? The Pongard are catching out units and heroes in rotation here. Palascars are up. Now they're sending the Treb backwards as B starts to get capped. You see Bluterus behind us about to try and do something with Cav here. Sledgeman might spot that. He's got a unit that could potentially stop it. As they start to completely fold and disappear back to home point. And they have to be here quickly. And they have to get there now. Because the any boys will keep that push going. They're going. Momentum is going in their favour. They're going to just keep pushing straight the way through. Try and pick off units as they can. Maybe sending some trebs to a certain area if they can get in a good position here. But the any boys are clearly moving at a rate of knots to try and get to where they need to be as quickly as they possibly can. Couple will peel off and grab that supply point as the units go around to deal damage. Take down just back in blame uh, whacking blame in the back there. But we're at fifteen v fifteen now. We're unit wise we're pretty close. 
We're only 30 to 40 units difference uh, in the grand scheme of things overall death wise. Attack haven't lost that many, only t just under 200, whereas there's over 440 almost on the attack, uh, the defensive side. So all about the position now, where do they go from here? CK calls in the trebuchet, and it's going to do trebuchet, the trebuchet, fuck the trebuchet on the unit of Senjis, it's in there, is that Senjis? Treb comes in. Does hit a couple of them, and that's a quite a weaker unit, so it's quite a lot of damage that could be done to them, rather than it being something like Moda or Iron Reapers, they survive a little bit better when a Treb comes in on top of them. But now the Pawn Guard team are making their way forward to the home point, trying to find an opportunity. Blocking off units at the spawn here as well, as a, as a way to kind of deter them. They come through the main area that we'd normally come with in the siege, most of them, and then they're coming through the small gateway as well. So either way, both of them in a good position here, potentially pinch Slavs as Slavs try to do any, but they actually, Slavs starts to make a move. Like Slavs are making a move, and then as they make a move, the enemy boys are gonna pinch them from behind in a perfect position to totally, totally screw them over here, Slavs. I don't know what they're thinking or what their brain was thinking there, but that seems like a very brave thing to do. You're pushing out to them in your defensive structure here. The enemy boys are going to be able to close off that area here. There's some heroes still alive, but they can close that off. They've got Modal in the back already. They are stopping the units of Cav coming around here. So that Hussar's charge is going to come in. It's just going to come in and die to Modal. I don't know what Regers was thinking, and they literally no idea what he was thinking. He should have done that with his mob beforehand. No idea what the, the plan was that. But it's 12 v 12. We're hero count. We're quite close. Unit wise, those Slavs are down by 200 units now. The way that that happened because they were pinched in the back with the guys from Pongar. Now they're going to get hit from three different directions. The guys that are surviving on the point just now are going to get pinched in all three directions. There's only one way for the guys of Slavs to get into this point and it's from supply point straight in here it looks like Pongar have got momentum going here units and numbers and heroes are on their side the Trebs are going to come in and it's the only place they can get in here and they're just going to get trebbed in the face this is how you do it this is definitely like if I was if, if, I'm, if you're watching this back Slavs why, why are you pushing out of your defensive sp why? why? the team is about to capture the final flag why would you push out of your defensive structure towards guys that could come and get you in the back? Like that was probably one of the worst shot calling decisions you did there. Out of that whole thing, you took the fight to the guys that have to make the fight, come, bring the fight to you. You don't take the fight to the attackers. They have to attack you. You have to stay in your position ready. You start moving Fort Abrasio, you started moving Flamers, you started moving Palace Guards, ISGs. You're moving all of this. When they're moving, they are so vulnerable. Like, for the most part, they are so much more vulnerable. Watson, MVP once again. Two hero kills, 80 unit kills. But look at the difference. There's not even that many hero kills in the grand scheme of things. For the attack inside, in comparison to what the other one was. Like, you've got Uruhill here again with five. Should have scarved with four. Uh, on the defense, you've got Body Fest with four. But most of the time... Not really much dif difference. Gumo gets MVP for the, the defensive side. 64 unit kills, one hero kill. But post-match analysis, there's literally nothing between it. Like, nothing. There's, like, nothing. Like, 21 to 13. That is... There's not a massive difference with it. Unit-wise, yeah, we almost, like, doubled up the unit kill, right? I get That's the difference. But that ca most of that death kills came from the two pushes where they pinched them. Like, Slavs took it to them and lost their units. And and that instantly, instantly gone. Like, I, I don't understand the play. I don't understand where it came from or what the plan was that. But I wouldn't have done that. Like, I've not seen anybody take the attack to the attackers and win.